Welcome to Weasel Jock Gaming, and today we're looking at the Sun and Moon Team-Up Torrential Cannon theme deck. Taking a look at the tactics for this deck. This is the Blastoise deck, and really that's about the only thing it has going for it. Um, this deck doesn't have a lot of strengths, and it was completely overshadowed by Relentless Flame. Really, again, the only thing it really has going for it is the fact that it's Blastoise, so it's kind of a fan favorite in a lot of cases. Um, this is a water deck. Uh, there is a little bit of flying type in here too to mix things up, but the only energy we have is water, and we do have 20 water energy in this deck. We'll go ahead and get into the Pokemon, and we're going to start with our starters. So the Pokemon that you want to start the game off with, that give you the most options to really get a good start, you're looking at Farfetch and Pidgey. Farfetch, of course, has the one energy collect that allows you to draw two cards. Pidgey has the one energy draw card, which, or the one energy collect, which allows you to draw a card. Both doing the same kind of thing. Farfetch is a little bit better, obviously. Uh, Pidgey might be uh, the one to go with if you have the rest of that line in your hand, or at least the next evolutionary phase. And that's really about it for our starters. Um, next up, we're looking at any defensive Pokemon we have, and we don't have much, but we do have Golduck. Golduck has 110 health. Now, the only pseudo-defensive thing we have here is Amnesia. Amnesia is a one energy attack that does 20 damage. And you get to choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon attacks, then that Pokemon can't use that attack during your opponent's next turn. This can lock down Pokemon so that they can't attack you back. If a Pokemon only has one attack, such as Psyduck, um, or, or even bigger ones, like Blastoise only has one attack, so you completely take away his ability to attack. Now, you only do 20 damage with it, however. So it doesn't do a lot of damage in return. But it's a nice way to get the first couple points of damage you need before you do the swim attack. For power, um, we really only have one option here. And that's the Squirtle, Squirtle Wartortle, Blastoise line. Squirtle and Wartortle, not very good. But Blastoise is pretty good. 160 health. Has a really nice ability called Powerful Squall. Once during your turn, you may look at the top six cards of your deck and attach any number of water energy cards you find there to your Pokemon in any way you like. That really allows you to flesh out your bench. If you get Blastoise going, you can use that Powerful Squall to either get the energy Blastoise needs or to energize other Pokemon. Hydro Tackle is a 3 energy attack that does 150 damage, which is fairly impressive. However, you do have to do 30 damage to yourself, which negates the nice health you have. Um, so you kind of end up killing yourself in a way. This, besides Blastoise, you do have another line that has some functionality, and that's the Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot line. Now, Pidgeotto is great for a different reason. Pidgeot, however, has some attack ability. Not a lot, but a little bit, and it's more manipulation than anything. It does have 130 health. The Whirlwind attack for 2 energy does 60 damage, and it allows you to switch their active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon, which can take certain players out of play, put really weak basics out on the, on the active spot that allows you to kill them off later, so that can be kind of powerful for getting some cards or controlling the play. The three energy spin storm is also kind of nice. Your opponent puts their active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their hand. Now that doesn't get you a prize card. That doesn't do any damage. However, it can take a very powerful player out of play. So if someone has you know, a really good card, a really good Pokemon down that's got four energy on it and it's the second stage, you can force them to put all that stuff back in their hand without any kind of a coin flip. This just happens. That took them, you know, a good three or four rounds to set that Pokemon up, and you just chucked it back into their hand. 
that changes things a little bit and makes Pidgeot a bit of a player. Now, you're not going to be doing a lot of damage. You're not going to be knocking out a lot of people with Pidgeot, but you can manipulate the game in a way that helps you out. Um, along the lines for attacking, the other time that you kind of have a bit of an attacker is if you're facing a water deck. Suddenly, Golduck becomes a little more powerful. His 3 energy swim only does 90 damage, but if any of your, if any of your opponent's Pokemon have a water energy attached to them, you may do 90 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon instead of the active Pokemon. That allows you to do 90 damage to benched Pokemon. You can knock out basics, even some stage 1 evolutions, and really get some easy knockouts there where the enemy's not expecting it. So Golduck can come and play for that, but that's only when facing other water decks, really. For types, you have a lot of water type, and you have some flying type in there with the Pidgey to Pidgeot line. So you're a little bit varied there. You're very strong against fire decks. Um, you have a little resistance against fighting decks, too. Um, you also have that extra little advantage against water decks with gold duck. However, you are weak to a lot of electric and grass decks. Um, there aren't many electric decks out there right now, but that's not really this deck's main problem. Um, there are some pretty good grass decks out there, though, so you kind of got to watch out for that. On to our supports. For drawing cards, you have two Howls and two Professor Kakui's. Professor Kakui also adds 20 damage to your attack, so keep that in mind and use him tactically for that reason. You also have two Cynthia cards. Cynthia allows you to shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw six more cards. A great way to cycle your hand. If you have stuff you need later, or stuff you don't want to make use of right now, but you don't want to discard, Cynthia is really nice to being able to allow you to cycle those back into your deck for later and draw some new cards. Copycat is great if your opponent has more cards than you do. If you're burning through your cards, Copycat allows you to copy your opponent's deck size, your hand size, I should say. Um, you can use it at other times too. You know, Even if you have eight cards, they have four, it might be worth it to cycle those cards you can't use back into the deck and draw four new cards. So you can use it that way. The other neat um, ability you have for draws is airmail. Uh, besides your, your Farfetch, of course, and your Pidgey. Pidgeotto is nice for airmail though, because this can work as an ability while you have it on your bench. Airmail allows you once during your turn you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them in your hand, and put the other at the bottom of your deck. Now that can often be dangerous because you're going to be putting something down at the bottom of the deck, but you do get to pick. So something goes in your hand, something goes to the bottom. Um, that's a great way to just keep drawing extra cards. You draw a card every turn with Pidgeotto on your deck, you draw two cards every turn. That doubles your draws, doubles your flexibility. That's a pretty powerful card. For polling Pokemon, you of course have Pokemon Fan Club that allows you to get some basic Pokemon out of your deck. You have Nest Ball that allows you to get a basic Pokemon and put it on your bench. You have Timer Ball that gives you a chance at pulling some evolutions. And you also have Brock's Grit that can be used to pull Pokemon out of the discard and get them back into your deck. Um, Brock's Grit can also be used to pull energy from the discard pile and get it back in your deck. And while we're talking about energy, of course, you have Powerful Squall that can be used to pull energy out of your deck and place it onto any of your Pokemon, which is pretty powerful. The only other card you really have in your deck is Switch, which allows you to switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon, saving you the retreat cost. Um, however, there isn't a lot of great use for that Switch card. Um, there isn't much else to say about this deck. 
it doesn't have a lot going for it. There isn't a lot of big heavy hitters. There isn't a lot of damage. There isn't a super amount of flexibility, although there is a little bit. Um, there is some manipulation at play with your Pidgeot. Um, but that's about it. And with Gold Duck a little bit too. But that's about it. And so that's where this deck kind of falls apart. It doesn't have a lot going for it. For power, it's only rated at a two it doesn't have a lot of heavy hitters blastoise is really it for your heavy hitters um 150 damage but it's going to do 30 damage to itself so you have a limited use for that because you don't have any heals in this deck your speed is your how fast you can get your deck up and hitting hard how how fast can you get your big hitters out to play and you really can't um, again, your only heavy hitter really is Blastoise. It takes three energy, and it's a stage two evolution. So it's going to take some work just to get up to the point where you can use Blastoise. Nothing else in your deck really shines as far as being able to do any damage. For agility, you're looking at um, how well you can get Pokemon on the bench, evolved, ready to go and play. Um, and your agility is a three here. It's not bad. You can get some things going pretty early that can help you out, like Pidgeotto and whatnot. Um, there aren't a lot of high evolutions or a lot of high energy needs, but there's not a lot of really great cards either. So your agility is a three. Efficiency is how well it does with energy, and it does pretty well with energy. Um, Brock's Grit can recover energy. Blastoise can play a lot of energy out there. Um, there's not a lot of high energy needs, so the deck does pretty well when it comes to energy. For complexity, it's a one. There's not a whole lot going on in this deck. There's not a whole lot of decisions to be made. There's not a lot of tricky play. Um, you know, about your biggest thing is just knowing when to deploy Pidgeot to really make the best use out of them. Resiliency is a one. You don't have any defensive cards. Um, your heaviest HP card um, is Blastoise, who is going to be dam doing damage to himself just to do damage to the enemy. So you have pretty low resiliency in this deck. Type ability is a three. You do have two major types um, with your colorless flying and your water. Um, your weaknesses aren't really super strong right now. There's not a lot of those decks out there that are going to be playing against your weaknesses. Um, so it's not bad when it comes to type ability. You do have some flexibility there. Manipulation's a three. And this comes into play a little bit because of Gold Duck, because Gold Duck can mess with their plans. But the big reason is Pidgeot. Pidgeot is a big player when it comes to manipulating the enemy's deck. You can whirlwind and pull out certain cards that you want to play. You could, you know, whirlwind in a really powerful card that doesn't have any energy on it yet and take them out before they can get energy on that card. You can whirlwind powerful guys out of the active spot and get lower power guys into the active spot where you can do damage to them. Um, Spin Storm is also awesome because you can waste two, three, four turns of the enemy play by forcing their active Pokemon and all the cards attached to it back into their hand, and then they have to start over again to get that Pokemon onto the deck and ready again. Um, Spin Storm can also be used as, a, as an instant win kind of thing if they don't have anyone else on their bench to come in. So if you've been good enough to knock out some of the other Pokemon and they got the last guy in the active spot, throw Pidgeot in there with Spin Storm and just win the game without even knocking that Pokemon up, but just by returning it to their hand. So manipulation is really kind of where this deck shines and you don't have enough of it to really make it up for anything. All in all, this isn't a great deck. Um, it was only moderately useful in Sun and Moon and really doesn't hold up at all past Sun and Moon. Uh, wasn't a great deck then, isn't a great deck now. It's not going to shine anytime soon. Um, but hopefully you've learned a little bit about how... The, best make use of what you do have here. Um, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.